afternoon everybody and welcome to our Pottery at Home series. I've had a few requests this week from homeschoolers and from older students for animals. So I thought seeing as you now know how to make a hollow form that we'd make some animals. I want to remind you of hollow form because that's what the animals are based on. A piece of clay that is made into something that's quite large, can't be fired unless it's hollow. And we looked at the poppies in the last video and how to hollow the clay out so that we had a structure that we could work on. I showed you how to make these poppy seed heads and um, then when I had some time to myself I had a little play and I made this acorn. Somebody will phone in and tell me it's not an acorn, I'm pretty sure it is. It's my version of an acorn and really that's what art's all about. It's about taking something and reproducing it but giving it a little bit of um, style, a little bit of artistic merit which means that it doesn't necessarily look exactly the same but it has some characteristics which say acorn. If you remember I also showed you how to make sprigs. That was when we took a fir cone and we pressed it into the clay and then we fired it, that was before firing, this is after firing, and we pressed the clay into this and it made these little patterns. And it was when I did that that I came up with the idea of making an acorn. And I think it'll look really lovely in my garden because um, I shall put it onto a really big wooden cane or a metal um, stick. And um, if I have half a dozen, then they'll look fabulous in the garden. Can't get that one now. So I'll just get a knife, if I can find a knife. Do I have a knife? And pull it out, just to remind you of the value, the worth of making sprigs so that you can use them to embellish your work. So there we go. That was last week's project. This week's project is based on hollow form. You know how to take a piece of clay and how to um, hollow it out. Now there are all kinds of different ages watching this demonstration. I think my youngest is six, uh, my oldest is 86 or was it 87 recently, Jean? Um, this project is for anyone. What you do is you take the knowledge and you work it out at your level. So if you're a beginner, have a go. If you're advanced, do it well. It doesn't really matter. Just have a go. So, taking a piece of clay, creating a shape with it, hollowing it out is the basis, the beginning of your animal. Now there are all kinds of different animals that you can do. If you had a hollow form that started off as this shape, then I think you could see that in time that could develop itself into a fish. The great thing about this hollow form is it doesn't have two parts, so it's actually a very good beginner's project. All you need to do is take the centre out of the clay using a scoop. The scoop is something like this. But you could use anything. If you don't have any of these tools, you could use a spoon. So that would be the shape I'd start off with for a fish. This is also a fish, but it's really based on a rounded piece of clay, a rounded form. This is a fish. These are all made by young students, homeschoolers and the like, and see how it comes to life when it's got colour on. And all very different. This one's had a lot of scales added to it. Different colours give a different effect. And in fact, the tail is just two teardrops. Here we've got two teardrops of clay. Pop them together. Hey presto, that's a tail. You can stick it on the end and start modelling your fish. However, that could be a bird as well. Let's take a look at the bird we've got here. It's very simple. Another one. Look how differently they look when they've got colour on. And of course you don't see birds with these extreme colours on. You do see birds with blue white, blue tints, I think. But um, when you take something that's natural and then you develop it in art, it just needs to have some characteristics. It doesn't have to look exactly like a bird. This here is an iguana, or it's my version of an iguana. 
And again, this is a very simple one because it's based on half of a full um, form. So you can actually not, you don't actually have to stick two halves together. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, um, it'll become clearer in a minute. But if you've watched the Poppy Seed Head video, it'll be very clear because I did labour over how to hollow a piece of clay. He's really cute. Somebody decided to hollow a piece of clay and then texture lots and lots of squares and put them on top to make a tortoise or a turtle. I think he's cute. This one is a more realistic bird. So you can be as arty as you like or you can be as realistic as you like. By the way, it's a robin. So lots and lots of ideas there for making animals. First of all, you've got to decide on your skill level. Have you ever hollowed a piece of clay before? Would it be a good idea to do something that doesn't have legs on first? Or would it be an idea to have something that does have legs on, but it's sitting down? I'm moving all these out of the way so that I can still work. It doesn't have to be huge, it can be tiny. I love these little ones. They still need to have a pencil stuck up inside them so that there's a hollow area. So don't make it solid if you can help it. If it's solid, it's more likely to explode. I quite like these little ones, they're quite cute. And this one's a long one. And again, just a little bit of the clay from down the centre taken out. Sometimes it's nice just to focus on the face of an animal. This is a little lamb. We've got lots of lambs in the field at the moment. They're all being born right now. And then their faces are so lovely. It's a good idea to practice a face and then worry about, you know, in a, in a, in a subsequent piece of work, shall I make a body as well? If you've made half a dozen faces, you'll be getting towards what looks like a lamb before you actually start on a body. So lots and lots of animals that you can make which are really quite self-explanatory. It's just a piece of clay, which is a form, and then you add other pieces of clay onto it to create your animal. Now I am going to show you in a bit more detail than that, how to make an animal. And in fact, when I was walking past my daughter's bedroom the other day, I spotted a zebra she made when she was about 11. And I thought it was rather cute. And I thought about how much people like horses and like making horses um, and how much children might like to make a zebra. And in fact, how many artists have made zebras because they're really very cute and they've got lots of pattern on them. And he's rather heavy, but he is hollow. And that was her first adventure into building form. So if she could do that at 11, let's see what we can do. So first of all, you need to work like a real artist. So I'm going to show you how to make a zebra today. And a real artist doesn't just think, I know I'm going to work a zebra today. They do research. Research means you look in books first and foremost, or on the internet, and you find some pictures. And over here, I've got some pictures of zebras that I've collected. I've got a picture of a face and I've got a picture of a body and essentially that gives me the knowledge I need. It informs me as to what kind of a shape a zebra is. Don't just do it from your imagination, it'll go all wrong. So first of all, I've divided the zebra up into main forms. So the body has got a circle around it here, the head has got a circle around it here, and the legs are just tubes, and the neck is like a tube between the body and the head. And with that in mind, I started to develop an idea about how I could build a zebra. Here's my plaster bed, and I'm going to first of all give my clay a little wedge to wake it up. It doesn't need much. And then I'm going to start banging it into the shape of the body. Now you don't have to make a huge one like the one that I just showed you, but the first thing you do need to do is to make the body. Start with the body and go from there. 
Oh, by the way, it's not a realistic zebra. It is a bit of a caricature in a way. It's a funny one, but I quite like it. Not only have I looked at um, zebras, I've looked at artists who have used the zebra as a basis for their work. And there's some really beautiful work done by Marie Pratt. Down here you can see zebras with um, circus people sitting on top. And at the back of this one there's a dog. They're really, really rather cute. This zebra is completely green. You don't see a green zebra. But you can do a green zebra if you want. You can do anything. Let's see how the body's going on. Well, what I know from the body is that actually it's got a big rump. That's his behind. And it goes to more of a pointy front, like that. The next thing that I've got to do, if you're watching the other video on Holloway, you'll know this bit, is cut it in half. I've then got to mark it all the way round with a knife. And take out the middle using my scooping tool. So whatever animal you choose to do, this is how you're going to start. If it's a fish, if it's a bird, whatever it is, this is how you're going to start. I could spend a bit more time on this, but I don't have all day, so that will do. Feel that it's even and equal all the way round, and then do the other side. When you've got the two halves done, and this is shown in a lot more detail in the other video, you need to score the edges like that. You then need a mixture of clay and water called slurry or slip. Some people call it slip. It's more of a slurry than a slip. A slip is more liquid and fine and runny. And then, having done the other side as well, you need to stick them back together. Ooh, make sure you stick them back the right way. When you stuck them back together, you need to get a kidney. Or a card will do if you haven't got one. Usually your dad's credit card or your husband's credit card will work better than any other. And for a bit of extra support, a little bit of clay made into a coil and put around the steam. Squeeze that one way, squeeze that the other way, all the way around, and then work into the clay, into the body, will secure it. Let's pretend I put that seam all the way around. And let's just tidy up the form. If you haven't got a plaster bat, then just a wooden table will do. Preferably not mum's best mahogany one. Get the shape just right. Take a look at your picture. There's my zebra. He's got a big rump and it's a little bit narrower at the front. So it's like big behind, smaller at the front. Ladies, you will understand that well. Okay, so there's my body started. Doesn't look like a zebra yet, but be patient. Things never look what they're going to look like in the end of the beginning, just bear with. Now, you also need to make the head and you also need to make the legs. So the head is going to be a smaller piece of clay. Let's just pop that on there. Yes, I can see that that might be a head. I'm gonna roll it that way. I'm going to roll it round that way, roll it that way. Um, and this is quite a small zebra here. You can see it's going to go on there. But we need a neck in between. And to make a neck, what you need to do is to roll out coils of clay like this, make them into a circle, like that. Place them onto the front part of the zebra and then just pull them down like that. 
And this is the beginning of the neck. It's called coiling. Coiling is a technique generally used for making coil pots, round pots, quite large structures. But it's also um, a technique used in sculpture for building part of the sculpture. Um, and so it's good to learn about coiling in a small way on these models before you think of making a big pot out of coils. Okay, so there's his neck coming along, there's his head, and um, I'm leaving that on the table there because now I need to think about his feet, his legs. We're not worried about the quality of what I'm doing, what we're worried about is how to do it. And when you're in, under pressure, because you don't have a lot of time to demonstrate something, or um, you, uh, you're being filmed, then really what I'm only trying to get over is how to do it, not how well I can do it. So for the legs, again we need a hollow form and um, we need our canvas to stop the clay from sticking to the table and we need to roll a piece of clay flat. You've done this before, you did this when you did slab pots. So the thickness of these pieces of um, these sticks is four millimeters so a couple of rulers each side would probably be enough they're not very thick thank you caroline for cutting my sheets of paper i know you'll be watching no doubt you'll be making a zebra later and um you need to cut when you've placed it onto paper a straight line and a straight line at the top. We're making the legs. I've got to stick here a piece of doweling which I'm using. Now if you don't have a piece of doweling or if the piece of doweling is making your legs too big for your piece of work then there is an alternative and I'll tell you about that in a minute. Let me just show you how to do this. You place the doweling which has got paper on to stop the clay from sticking to it onto the clay and put your hands underneath here and you roll it on then you get rid of the paper don't let the paper get in the way roll it to there now because this clay is nice and soft i don't really need to use any slurry at all get rid of that roll it over just once don't keep rolling if you keep rolling it will sort of buckle and then you take your credit card or your kidney and you run it all the way up from the bottom to the top tidying it up and then what you do next is to push the stick out and place this outside to dry if you put it outside to dry in this weather it's very hot today 15 or 20 degrees quite a change then um, it's only going to take maybe 15 20 minutes so be careful it can get too dry alternatively you can use a hairdryer. But when you, oops. But when you use a hairdryer, um, don't just hair dry it in one spot. You'll need to dry for quite a while. But you need to be careful with drying using a hairdryer because you need to waft it um, around the clay, not concentrate it in certain areas. Let's pick up the poppy seed here. That I just knocked over. There we go. I'm going to put this one outside until it dries. Here's a couple that I made earlier. You can see that they're nice and firm. They stand up. But they're not too dry. Unfortunately, two of the legs I made dried a bit too much. And they dried at the edges, at the ends. And so what I did was I wrapped a little bit of paper with water around the ends. And look, it's made the clay go very soft again. You have to be very careful doing that. It's been on a rather long time, so it's gone super soft. 
but I'll be able to stick with it now. You can't stick hard clay to dry clay. It has to be a sort of even amount of moisture in both. So by putting that paper towel with a little bit of water on it around, I've actually made this go back to soft clay. It was really hard when I got it in a few minutes ago. Okay. So I have actually got a zebra that I started earlier. One that I paid a little bit more attention to the size of it. And you can see that I've started to work on the neck here. Neck is attached to the body. I haven't cut a hole there because if I do cut a hole, then I'll be letting all the air out and it's more likely to, um, to bend. But I do need to put a hole in eventually. I've also got a head and the head is going to go on there. It's a bit of a big head, but I think it'll be fine. So what I've got to do now is put the detail into the head because if I don't do this now, it'll be harder later. I start by putting the eyes in. And this is where it's really good to have a picture of the head. The main areas that I'm concentrating on are going to be the mouth, are going to be the eyes, and of course the ears. So I just roll my thumb around until I've got a dent. Now the mouth is not right at the moment. Let's see what we can do about that. What we need is a sausage of clay. Roll it very quickly, otherwise the clay will dry out. And I'm going to create, I'm going to create his top, the top part of his mouth here. Again, coils are really useful for modeling. You need a lot of patience. And you need to keep looking at your picture. And you can see that that has lengthened the, no, the, the mouth. Horsey mouths are very sort of, they move a lot. So, you know, it can be a bit wobbly, it's fine. So there's the top of the mouth. And now I'm going to make a, a sausage for the bottom of the mouth. Okay, and that's going to go on there like that. And there like that. And I'm going to pull it down like that. Okay. Now the top looks like it could do with being a bit longer. I'm going to put in a bit more on here and extend the length of the mouth. I'm going to put two holes where his nose are going to go nose where his nostril is going to go. I'm going to get my knife and I'm going to work into the mouth a little and just give him a little bit of character. I don't know if zebras say no. Horses do. So you want to sort of try to work out what his mouth should look like. Have a good look at your picture. I think the bit that's missing here, whoops, is the kind of cheerly bit that these horses have got, these zebras have got. So you don't need to worry about the additions being not hollow, but you don't want to be adding too much clay. And I'll just put my hand under there and make it look a little bit more. Like a 
chin. Our sepals have chins. Do sepals have chins? That bit. There. Right, so I've worked on his nose and I've worked on his eyes. And now what I need to do to make his nostril really show up is use a coil again. I'm only putting it round the bottom half, but it just accentuates the shape. And if you think about horses, because they're the, the most likely thing you've looked at rather than a zebra, they really do have big nostrils. And again, their nostril doesn't move around a lot. So I've done him quite a big nostril. Here's my stylized zebra. And this is something that, you know, if you're young, you can have a go at this. And if you're older and you've got more experience, you can do it better. You can make it more realistic. But at the end of the day, who really wants a realistic zebra? What we want is an artistic zebra. He's definitely got big nostrils there. So when you're happy with your nostrils, you can put a little eye into the, the socket that you've already created. There's a socket on the other side and just make a ball, pop some slurry there and pop your eye in. Make sure, I always make two balls at the same time, make sure they're both the same size. Make sure that you press it down firmly. This is a point at which you can give up very often because you can look at what you're doing and think, you know what? It doesn't look anything like what I'm trying to do. But that's because it hasn't got all its bits on yet. Just keep going and keep playing and, um, and you will get there. So stick with it. So that's my face of my zebra beginning to emerge. And, and here is the body that I made earlier. Um, the neck part is where the coils have been built up slowly to support the head. There's no slurry in between these, you just go straight on with a soft clay and you build it up until you've got a good platform to put your, your head on. And in fact, the zebra does have quite a chunky neck, so take a look at that. So this is what the head's going to sit on. And it's actually going to disappear quite a long way into there, okay? And then it's going to be built up around this and modelled. Okay, so to stick it on, we need to first of all slurry and score to make sure that it sticks on well. I'm going to slurry around here, wherever I think it's going to be touching the edges. Pop lots and lots on. Thank you, yes, ma'am. Pop him on. And pop him off quite firmly. I quite like the idea that he might be looking slightly up and then you push the clay from the neck into the body. I don't know how my daughter did this when she was 11. I remember when she was making it I was busy and I kept saying yeah yeah just do that yeah yeah yeah. Just do that. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Oh, well done. And actually, that's quite hard. Now, I'm not going to worry about there too much because that's where the mane's going to go. Push it all together. And I'll be perfectly honest, when you're trying to do something and you're being filmed, it's very off-putting and you can't concentrate on what you're doing. That's my excuse anyway. 
right now I think it's looking a bit like the Loch Ness Monster. But you know what? It's fun. Have fun. I think the thing that really is going to make this is its ears. Let's do its ears next. It's quite an ugly flower. I made a ball and then I pointed one end of the ball and then I pressed my hand in, my thumb in, um, and, and it came round like that from what I can see on the picture. Let's see what that does. Oh yes! Oh yes! It's definitely going to look a little bit like a zebra. I think probably the stripes will give it away when it's painted. That doesn't mean I'm necessarily going to make them black and white. It doesn't have to be black and white. It could be any colour really. Oh yes, that's definitely zebra. Now. I can see some nods and a few, not really sure that's a zebra, but give it time, give it time. I've pulled the clay down at the back, I've scored. And I should have scored there too, look, oh, there. If you want something to stick well, score both places. And I've poured a little bit of excess clay down. There you go. At this point, he's getting a little bit of a character. I need, need to start to think about what's the name going to be. Who are you? Hi. Oh, yeah. Zebedee. Zebedee Zebra. There you go. What he needs now is a mane. Now, I'm doing all the detail before I put the feet on because when I put the legs on, that's when it's going to be really tricky. So to do the detail, what you need is a little bit of flat clay. And the detail, in this case, is the mane. Now there's lots of ways that you can make a mane. It's quite a thick piece of flat clay. Um, and I'm taking this card. Oh, it's not a very good one, that one. It's a paper one. Oh, good, good race course. Thank you so much, Caroline. This is a good one. I like this one. You can use a kidney if you've got a toolbox. Look what happens. Now that is gold dust. Scrape it off and that is going on to the main. Let's make some more. As I pull it, it gathers. I put my knife underneath it and scoop it off and make myself lots. There you go. One more lot, I think. Yes. Lots and lots of mane there. And then all we need is to put a little support onto Zebedee, Zebra. So, again, a coil cause is so useful. Just stick it on with your fingers, each side, because the clay is nice and soft still. And then just give it a little pinch up. And then what you do is you cut your pieces, slow it down here, Pop it on. Pop it on. It's very clever. In fact, one of the realistic birds I showed you had got all the feathers made like this. And what's great is when it's been fired, when the glaze runs into it, all of the undulating surfaces will give you know, a lot of texture. And of course you can do a lot more detail here. You can play with it. You can get your knife into some of those grooves and make them look like they're part of the animal, part of the Zebedee, sorry. 
a bit more slowly down this side and then I push them over and they meet together and that will just make them that bit stronger. And I think I've just about got enough to go on there, look, like that. I can get um, a brush and brush away any nasty bits of slurry or mess. I can use my finger to polish around. I can use my knife to help join the patterns to his neck. He's been very patient. Well done. Look, I'm not sure actually whether anybody out there would like to make a unicorn because this looks like he could be a unicorn. It's certainly got a big enough fit there for a unicorn. I know there's some homeschoolers that will probably turn this into a unicorn. Okay, so there he is. He's got his mane on. If you don't like that mane, there's another way you can do this. And if you've got a garlic press, please ask first before removing it from the kitchen drawer, my children. G. Look at this. Wait, this is the moment. This is it. Oh. <laughs> well, you know, I used this earlier. And uh, there's a lot of dried clay in there. I'd like to say it's garlic, but it's not. It's dried clay. <laughs> so nothing will come out. Let's just make this work. Come on. <laughs> there we go, look. So, you, you Zebra. Good. Oh, yes. I love his fringe. I just love that fringe. I'm going to prop it down with a little bit of sorry. Don't have it sticking up, it'll only break later. But oh, yes, don't you just love that? Let's just see that again. You just put the soft clay inside and press hard and. Okay, so um, after a bit of titillating of the mane and a bit of sponging of the body and generally feeling that he'll do. Um, don't listen, he's fine. Um, it's time to put the legs on. Now, if you've got something soft at home, it would be really helpful because you're gonna to have to lie him down on one side, okay? Or her, could be her. And the next thing that you're going to need are your legs, which have dried nicely outside, okay? Now, if you make it really tall, do you remember the original zebra? Let's take a look at that. Oh my gosh, she's heavy. The legs are really tall. I suggest you make more of a Shetland zebra because long legs are gonna be very difficult. But anyway, what you do is up to you. And I'm going to show you how. First of all, you need to work out where the legs are gonna go. I've got four legs here. One, two, three, Okay, they're not going to be that long, but I'm going to keep them that long for now because I'm going to insert them into the body. And to insert them means we're going to use, lose that much of them. So, um, maybe they're a little bit long and it might be an idea to cut that much of each one off. This is your opportunity really to work on the, the feet if you wish. You could make... Um, some hooves at the bottom. Don't do too much. Um, but once you've got your zebra standing up, you're not going to be able to work on these feet at all. Okay, so tidy them up. Make sure they're flat. Actually, I've got the wrong end. 
and then you're ready to go. I'm going to put a hole here. And there are two ways of, of putting the legs on. You know, what you can do, put your finger on and make sure it's nice and open. What you can do is just stick them on like that. But I find that they're a bit wobbly like that. So what I do is dig a big hole out. If you're only doing short stubby legs, you don't need to do this, just stick them on. So, and then push the leg into the hole. So keep working away at the hole until it will go in. Okay, that one goes in like that. Don't make the gap between the legs too close. Um, and if you need to, pick it up and hold it in one hand. Once they go in, it's easy. It's just getting the hole big enough. That's a problem. One goes in there. Don't try to force them in. If the hole's not big enough, just keep going back. And get it bigger like this there you go we got there in the end push it in pop it down another hole at the back and now of course I've got used to the fact it's quite a big hole pop that in whoops maybe made too big a hole that and it should be going in that way and finally the final leg at the back so it's a bit of a bit of a fiddle as I said you can just stick them straight on if you want to but um, Although this is a fiddle now, later on it's a lot easier. You've got very sturdy. As I said, do not push it in. If you need to, pick it up. Hollow it out. And then push it again like that. Now it's not going to stick in like that, so they've all got to come out now one at a time. And what we've got to do is to put some slurry on the top. And put some slurry on each opening, like that. Okay, so once you've secured the legs, you need a sausage, clay, again, you roll it very, very quickly and you put it around each one of the legs. Now what you've got to do is to feed half of the sausage or the coil of clay into the body and the other half down the leg. This is the moment when we discover whether all the legs are the right length. Oops, one of them isn't. So we just need to trim it down a little. Don't 
shouldn't take too much off else you'll be taking the bottom of the legs off until you've got no legs left. Open the legs up a bit. And this leg here is a little bit short, so what I'm going to do to him is to add a little bit of clay to the bottom and sit him on that just to because I don't want him to get any shorter. In fact, I really like that splayed out look at the bottom. Looks a bit like a hoof. So I might do that to all the feet. Just around the front. Finally, to here, just round the front. And there he is. Okay, so Zebedee's now standing up. Um, if you're worried that your um, zebra or whatever it is that you're making um, is going to fall down, you can put a piece of wood between his legs. And you can roll a piece of bubble wrap underneath and you know support him like that. What you need to remember is that the clay is going to dry. As it dries, it's going to shrink. As it shrinks, it's going to move. So there must be no touching of the wood to the legs. And there must be plenty of support from the bubble wrap. The only thing that we need to do to Zebedee now, Zebedee Zebra, is to give him a tail. And um, I suggest that you... Make a hole in his bottom and then using your garlic press, making sure that um, you can clean it up afterwards for mummy or daddy or before you use garlic. Um, shove gently the tail inside. The only problem with this is if you leave all the tail sticking out like that, it will get broken. So put some slurry down his leg and bring the tail over to one side. All of the bits need to be stuck down like that. So I've got lots of tail here, and I can really add to the tail. I think a nice long tail is a great addition to Zebedee. He really does look like a horse out of Toy Story, or a zebra out of Toy Story. He could have a unicorn's top. I think he's rather cute. You have got to make sure when you work on the zebra that everything has dried to the right hardness and firmness before you start sticking them all together because if you stick him together and his legs are too wobbly you're going to have a very wobbly zebra. Actually that might be quite fun and if you're a little bit worried about this and the legs don't work what you can do is uh, make a lying down zebra, fold his legs up underneath him, that will be fine. So this was Charlie's original zebra she made when she was in 11. It inspired me to do mine, and I have to say that it's definitely a Toy Story look-ish zebra. I've got to make sure that he doesn't explode in the kiln, so I will um, get a knife and just put a few holes in him. Anywhere that there's a cavity, like in the head, he will need a hole. If you've got a pin, that would be better. Oh, I've got a pin over here. Okay, so lots and lots of holes anywhere where you think air might be trapped because you've been really good and you've hollowed him out, that's fabulous. But if you have not made an exit point for the air to come out, then I'm afraid he'll still explode. So make sure you do that next. So you've got lots of time to play with this, whereas I've had to really rather rush it. I have got one I made earlier which you might like to see. complete with a rider.
All of the areas I want to dry slowly have been wrapped in plastic. Which I can take off for you to see. So see what you can do when you've got a bit more time. When you concentrate, when you keep looking at your references, and be very careful how you dry this out, and be very, very careful how you transport it to be fired. Do you see the bird on the back? The bird on the back is made out of a tiny little hollow form, like the ones I showed you earlier. This is all going to be beautifully painted and coloured and because I can see it's drying very quickly at the base I'll probably have to give it a little spray. So whether you make a fish or a bird, whether you make a tortoise or an iguana or whether you just go making a very very small piece or a very very tiny zebra whatever your standard, whatever your level, whatever your age, you can have so much fun. See you again next time. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Bye.